Hey you guys, I'm Danny and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I will be sharing our home progress with you guys. We are building a house and I did not think that we would become homeowners again. More on that in a bit. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to follow along on our home building journey. Now I've got a lot of questions to get to that you guys have submitted to me on Instagram and also some questions that maybe you haven't even thought of yet. In case you are thinking about building a home one day or even buying a home one day, we're going to cover a lot of stuff. So before we do that, I do want to give you guys a little bit of background about where we are right now. Right now we are living in a three bedroom apartment. I am a stay at home mom. We are a family of six and we have four boys. We live off my husband's income. He is a truck driver and it wasn't until last fall when he landed a higher paying job that owning, oh owning a home seemed possible. This is not the first home that we've ever owned. Back in 2013, we did build a condo and at that time we only had one child. I did have a full-time job, but once we got pregnant with our second child, Raheem and I thought that it would be best that I stayed home with both of the boys. So that meant we had to cut back on a lot of our spending and downsize our home. So after three years of living in that condo, we did sell it and we've been living in apartments ever since. Honestly, the market made us do it. Like 2020 turned the real estate market into a, a seller's market. Like the competition is so freaking stiff. When we first thought about buying a home, you know, I had it in my mind that we were going to find a house with a fully fenced in backyard and a great school district with a finished basement for extra storage and a playroom and get it for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars under the asking price and i soon realized that this is not hgtv this is 2021 and the housing market is not like that anymore also because of the pandemic it caused mortgage rates to drop at an all-time low making it all of a sudden super affordable for almost anyone to buy a house that means that there are more people out there looking to buy a home right now than there are actual homes out there for sale i mean people are getting desperate like they're offering playstation 5 to desperate parents you know just to get their offers accepted and we did not have the money to be in a bidding war with a lot of other buyers we pretty much had no choice but to build now for privacy reasons i'm not going to share who we're building with but i can share with you the home we are building so it will be a four bedroom two and a half bath home with a two car garage and it's just under 2300 square feet which is a huge upgrade from the just under 1000 square foot apartment that we live in right now and i am so in love with the open concept floor plan i have put together a walkthrough of the model home over on my blog and i will have that linked in the description box below now i'm going to say the obvious one of the best things about building a home is that you don't have to worry about the competition there are no bidding wars you have to go through you won't have to worry about falling in love with the property and someone stealing it right from under you the second thing i really love about buying a new build home is that it is almost custom i mean you really get to pick out all of your fixtures and your finishes and there's just all kinds of stuff i mean it's really extensive but it is so much fun the last thing that i think is a really big benefit to building a home is the maintenance like i feel like a lot of people are afraid to buy a home because they are afraid of the responsibility if something breaks if the roof leaks if there's mold behind a wall somewhere like those repairs are scary and they are expensive having the peace of mind knowing that you own a brand new home is just really comforting that being said there are definitely some cons to building a home that i just have to get off my chest here number one you could end up on a smaller lot it makes me sad that a lot of builders are building communities now where your homes are right on top of each other. I mean, who wants to go outside and shake hands with their neighbors from the driveway? I'm probably being a little bit over dramatic, but that's kind of what it feels like. Con number two, you will most likely end up in a HOA, Homeowners Association community, which will basically control everything you can do on the outside of your home. It is the difference between 
how high your privacy fence can be, the location of your mailbox, if you are responsible for maintaining your own landscaping and cutting your own grass. Like there's just so much to it. Con number three, it may cost you a lot more money to make your home feel like home. A lot of people feel like a lot of the builder grade um, products and stuff that they put in the home, like it can make your house feel flat and lack a ton of character. That's the good thing about building a home is that you can really add all those extra pieces that you want, but it's probably gonna cost you more money and either pay for those upgrades now or when you move in, just make small upgrades over time. And speaking of upgrades, in my opinion, there are six main areas that I feel like are worth splurging on. And I have a list here that I'm gonna to refer to. So number one is definitely gonna be flooring. Like hands down, if you have pets or if you have little ones like I do, you're gonna to wanna to invest. Honestly, a lot of the carpet that builders put in these new homes are so thin and so cheap that they probably would only last you like one to two years max and you would find yourself having to either remove the carpet or replace it anyway. So you might as well go ahead and make that investment now and just go ahead and upgrade your carpet. Number two, ceilings and windows. These are structural things that you cannot change later. And if you do try to change it later, like if you're doing the games out here, yeah, that's gonna be a whole project. So if you want to make your home feel bigger, invest in higher ceilings. And also make sure you add as many windows as possible if it makes sense if you love natural lighting as much as I do definitely upgrade your overall layout talk with your builder and see what options you have with your floor plan maybe you can turn a loft into a guest bedroom with an ensuite bathroom or maybe you can turn your formal living space that you would never use for formal purposes into a private office with a door on it because you work from home I don't know but definitely whatever changes you can make to the layout ask your builder and invest in them because if it's going to make sense for your home life, for your family life, then do it. Another area that you're gonna want to spend a little money on upgrading is electrical outlets and lighting. Of course, you can always hire an electrician to you know, install this or change that out at any time, but you might as well just go ahead and get it out the way now. We decided to upgrade our outlets in our living room and in our bedroom. So we will have an outlet now in the center of both walls so that way when we go to mount our TVs on the walls, we won't have to worry about trying to hide the cords because hello, it's Tidy Up With Danny here. We don't do clutter, no, no, no. Your cabinets and countertops is also another place that you would definitely want to consider upgrading here. But first, let me stop you. It's not about the way it looks. It's about the material it is made from. So if you cannot afford to upgrade to granite countertops, don't, just go ahead and get the laminate ones. If you want a white kitchen, like me and it costs way too much money for you to upgrade your cabinets to make them white get the standard or go a little bit above and paint them later and last but not least lifestyle features i'm talking things like double vanity sinks or maybe you want a soaking tub in your master bath these are things that you will always see in the model home that don't come with the standard floor plan now since i talked about the upgrades i think that you should splurge on i also want to tell you the upgrades i think that you can totally skip things like light fixtures and hardware finishes backsplash paint even your appliances if they're not already included and i say that because you probably would change your mind two to three years anyway those are small things that you can always make a Lowe's or Home Depot project later. In a nutshell, the entire home building process can take up to six months. And if you're building a larger home, it probably would take you like nine to 12 months. Basically, the first step is you're gonna wanna visit as many model homes as you can, then choose a builder, choose your floor plan, get pre-qualified, put, down down, put down your deposit, get underwritten approval, attend your design meeting, wait for your dig date, watch your home go up, yay, and then plan for closing day. If you need to pause this video right now and take a screenshot of this, you can. I have also made this in a print-friendly format, and that is linked in the description box below for you to download. Right around the end of October, our house is supposed to be done, but we will have to wait and see. This is a question that almost everyone has. According to Lindy Tree, if you're a first time home buyer applying for FHA loan, if you look at the chart here, the minimum mortgage requirements for 2021 include having a 580 credit score, three and a half percent down payment, and a 31% front end debt to income ratio. I will go ahead and link the Lindy Tree article in the description box below because it covers everything in great detail. The next step is actually to apply and there are a lot of documents you need like 
two years of pay stubs, two years of tax returns, three months of bank statements. Pretty sure I'm forgetting something. Oh, and 30 days worth of pay stubs. I'm not a loan officer, so the advice I'm about to give is purely for informational purposes only and based on my own personal experience. And if you need any assistance, I definitely suggest reaching out to someone who can help you. So now that we got that out the way, yes, 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 yes. You could absolutely buy or build a home with one income. And my family is the perfect example of this. My husband is a truck driver. He's the breadwinner of our family. And this house is completely going under his credit, using his income. They did not need my information at all. Now I'm gonna be honest here, we had a realtor for about two weeks. That was after we had seen every model home that we wanted to see. We had narrowed down the builder we probably were gonna build with, the floor plan we were gonna choose. And I decided to go ahead and hire a realtor anyway because I really wanted to give her the chance to see if she could find us an existing property. She tried her best. Um, after about two weeks of sending us emails to properties that we couldn't even see in person because as soon as she sent us the email to check it out, I mean, it went into contract just like that. We fired her and that's when we basically decided that it would be best for our family to go ahead and build. So that being said, if you choose to build your home, unless you have a home that you're selling, yeah, you, you really honestly don't need to hire a realtor because the entire transaction is between the builder and you. So you don't need the realtor to be involved in any of that but of course if you want to house hunt the old-fashioned way then yes that's where having a realtor can definitely help that's a really hard question i know from our personal experience i had to weigh out all of our options the competitive housing market the long time period it takes to actually build a home and we decided that it was actually going to be worth the wait. Buying a home is a really big decision. The best thing you can do is just to keep an open mind. And of course, don't fall in love with the first house or floor plan that you see either. And don't be afraid to shop around for the best mortgage rates too. I hope that by sharing our experience so far, it has helped you in some way. And even if you're not in a position to buy or build a home right now, don't get discouraged. You can't compare your start to someone else's finish because you have no idea what it took for them to get to where they are. So start saving, build your credit, and keep the faith. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Next time I give you guys a house update, there will be walls in here. I cannot wait for that to happen. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.